Hey, Penny, um, I've got my level three stats exam coming up and I guess I'll just fail it then. No, it's okay, come on. Cool, cool. Um, I did do a bit of study. Oh. I know that for the probability concepts questions, I need to decide between a Venn diagram, a table and a probability tree. How do I know which one to choose? So in the question, sometimes they're going to have three components or variables that they're going to use, or sometimes they'll have two. If they've got three, most likely going to be a Venn diagram. Cool, cool. If there's two, it's going to be either any three of them. So um, if it could be a tree, or it could be a table, but most of the time those two are going to get you the same answer anyway. So if you get the wrong one, you'll get stuck, go back, try again. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So really working through that, and then if yep. I get the wrong answer, try another one. Yep. Cool, cool. Um, for the, that's fine for concepts, but distributions, I know that I need to know four different distributions and some characteristics for each one. Yep, so some of the questions they're going to ask you to choose a model that fits the data and also justify your choice. Um, so knowing the, just all the characteristics behind each of the models is a really good point because you're going to need to be able to justify your choice and I would at least state three for each of the questions. Great, great, okay, cool. Um, one thing that always gets me is, is uh, the wordings in the question. Sometimes if, given that, yeah. or, or more than. You know. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a, that's a real hard part about stats is actually understanding this whole question and picking out all the information and actually trying to figure out what they actually want you to answer it with. is It's a challenge. So um, I would look for given and if like that um, because they're pointing towards conditional probabilities. Um, but I would also look out for what um, I would underline all of the numbers because you should be using every single bit of information that they give you to answer the question and um, I would also look at what they're actually asking for so are they asking for a percentage, a probability or a proportion and make sure you answer it in the right format. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, um, one thing that I used to do for the normal distribution questions uh, was, uh, well, whilst I was practicing, was draw out that normal distribution curve yep. and then uh, shade in the part that I'm talking about. Yep. It kind of helped me visualise it a bit more. Yep, and it's also good for the examiners to see that you also know what you're doing. As great, well. great, okay, yep. cool. Um, um, one question I came across that was really weird, um, well my final answer was at least, it was talking about obesity and heart rate and the question, my final answer told me that people who were obese had a, had a, were more likely to have a lower resting heart rate than people who are not obese and I thought that doesn't make sense. No. <laughs> no. So I think it's really important um, at least to check my final answer yep. with that question. They're not going to give me a piece of scientific research that doesn't make any sense for no, what we you no. know. Right. So it's good to kind of take a step back and look at it through, through a logical point of view and say, does this really make sense? So yeah, real good point. Yeah. Great, great. Okay, cool. Um, I've got two days left to study. What do you reckon I should do? I reckon past papers. Some of the stats, concepts and um, all the theory behind it is not super complicated, but the actual application into the, some of the questions is quite challenging. So make sure you get as much practice in as you can before this exam. Great, great. Okay, um, I guess I'll crack on with some past papers. Yep, no worries. Thanks, Penny. Good luck.